How much time can you imagine? A hundred years? A thousand? A million years? Our Earth holds clues to the immensity of time. From its ancient beginnings and violent past, the Earth has revolutionized how we understand time. Time is more vast than we ever imagined. And that's raising new questions about our ancestral roots, about our connection to life's oldest secrets. Our Earth is revealing our place in time and ultimately our future. Our whole world is shaped by time in ways that are often hidden from us. Time, for most of us, is dictated by the rhythms of our daily life. We get up in the morning, we go to work, we come back at night. So watching the days and the years pass by can be quite disconcerting. But what if we could see farther? to a greater horizon of time. We know that time stretches into a past that existed before we were born. We can also imagine it rolling on into a future long after we're gone. But just how far back and how far forward does time really go? And where do we fit into this larger time scale of life and even the Earth? Answers to these questions are now fundamentally changing our sense of who we are and even what it means to be human. In this program, I'm going to explore the huge scale of Earth time, its beginning and its end, and our place within it. On a rugged cliff of granite in South Dakota, stonemasons risk life and limb to create something unique. The world's largest sculpture. It's a memorial to Crazy Horse, the Native American chief from the 19th century. But it's also a monument to a uniquely human sense of time, one that allows us to imagine a future beyond our own lives. Ruth Jilkowski is in charge of the carving. This is her life's work. I think sometimes people get into projects such as cathedrals or carving a mountain or the Sphinx and anything that's going to take a long, long time. And you may think, oh, this is going to take me 30 or 40 years, and then all of a sudden when you get started, it's going to be your lifetime and several more generations. Five, four, burn all. Ruth's faith in a future that stretches far, far beyond her own life is shared by three generations. Monique, a sculptor, is one of Ruth's seven children. I work here because I believe in what we're doing. And the purpose of Crazy Horse is way more than a mountain carving. The family is continuing the work of Ruth's husband, Korjak. In 1940, the young sculptor was invited by Standing Bear, chief of the Lakota, 
to create a fitting memorial to Crazy Horse, their great warrior leader. Korjak accepted the challenge and set to work with little more than a jackhammer and a monumental ambition. His vision for this project was so big, I don't think he even realized what it was going to entail. Korchak didn't think it was important to see it finished himself or for anyone to see it finished. He said the important thing is that you keep on working and you never stop. Korjak kept carving away the mountain till his death in 1982. But it's only recently, 50 years since Korjak began work, that Crazy Horse's huge 90-foot face is complete. It's anybody's guess exactly when the sculpture will be finished. I don't have the foggiest idea how long it's going to take. I honestly don't think Korchak did. Korjak's vision reflects a deep and fundamental human belief that time exists far beyond our own experience. I think it's incredible that Dad could come out here with nothing, nothing at all. And um, to see so far into the future, to be a part of that, it makes you very humble. We hope it will grow and plan that it will. And it's for the Indian people tomorrow and on into the future for as many generations as it continues. It's a dream that's becoming a legacy. Such legacies rely on a uniquely human concept of time. Our monuments testify to a certainty that time will always continue onwards. It stretches forwards into an unknowable future and back into a dim and distant past. Our knowledge of time lies at the very heart of our humanity. We learn from the past. We pass on that wisdom to the future. That's been the bedrock of our civilization. The relentless march of progress. The world we live in today. All that rests upon the accumulation of thousands of years of time. On the wall of Einstein's office, he used to keep photographs of all his predecessors to remind himself of the great debt that he owed them. In other words, we all stand on the shoulders of giants. There's no Shakespeare without classical Greece. There's no Einstein without Newton. There are no skyscrapers without the skill of generations of builders going back to the dawn of history. This awareness that time stretches into a distant past has driven us for thousands of years to ask one of the greatest questions of humanity. When did time itself begin? In the 17th century, an archbishop from Dublin decided to find out. For James Usher, the beginning of time was the moment of God's creation, of the earth, the heavens, and all of humanity. So he started with the Old Testament. All Usher really had to do was add up the various ages of the patriarchs, because the Bible tells us what age each person was when his son was born. So, for example, Genesis 5 tells us that Adam was 130 years old when his son Seth was born. Seth was 105 years old when his son Enosh was born. But at the end of the Old Testament, the family trees run out. Between that and the birth of Christ, 
there was a gaping hole in history.